Welcome back guys, this is Roberto again with um, well, episode 3 I guess of this podcast about how to get by, get on with your life in Tokyo um, and this episode's main topic is um, Wi-Fi and um, mobile phones I'm going to try to tell you all I know uh, about Wi-Fi and mobile phones, phones here in Japan, Tokyo um right so first of all my setup right now uh i had a little bit of problem with uh well basically with both uh i'm in a company accommodation without no wi-fi or internet access and uh, i can't really find any open networks that i can reach from my flat at the moment uh my best bet was to go out uh, near the the train station where uh, you can find usually a lot of um, stores and um, well basically your main go-to place as I found was either Family Mart uh, I think Lawson as well well all these uh, convenient stores uh, co- yeah, all these convenient stores or companies uh, usually have uh, free Wi-Fi uh, I went to Family Mart and uh, this particular Family Mart even had a kind of, uh, well, it had a smoking room. Uh, usually family, ho- family Marts have even a toilet that you can use. Uh, and there was even a, a small place to like uh, eat your food that you buy, so like a dining area. So it was basically perfect. Uh, I didn't check for any uh charge uh, like uh, electric plugs but there might be some even so you can just go there um switch on your laptop or just you know your smartphone connect to their um famima wi-fi i think it's called uh, something like famima and you have to register and you can well you have to register with your email address and uh here there are two ways that um they usually do it. Um, there is one method where they will temporarily open. So upon registering, they will temporarily open um, uh, the internet for your machine using your MAC address, and um, then you can. Well, then obviously you will have to enter an email address that is yours, that you have access to. Otherwise, you won't be able to confirm that it is your email address and you won't get any internet from that point on. Uh, and then there is a, another option where they won't really bother with that. You just enter whatever email address uh, you can or have in mind. Just make up something that you don't even own. And um, there you go, you have internet access. At Family Mart, I had to give a real one and I had to confirm it out of my my Gmail account. I had a Gmail account. Uh, Some other options are Facebook, Google account, uh, Twitter. uh, And obviously these also have to be real that you you have to have access to. Um, Right. Now, once you're connected, uh, usually... You, you you are usually granted a certain time. It's it's almost never unlimited. Uh, at least in these places. Um, so it's Family Mart and all these convenience stores. McDonald's has like... A, you, usually you can even go into Family Mart and not buy anything. However, I usually buy something like maybe 100 yen worth of thing because it's I'm using their Wi-Fi for free. Like... You know, uh, why not? Uh, so Ma- McDonald's, I think the cheapest thing you can get is a small uh, refreshment, like a drink. Uh, I usually order a uh, small hot tea. Uh, they give you Lipton, uh, sugar, uh, um, a mixer. L- they, they ask you if you want lemon with that. Um, it's really nice, and for 100 yen, uh, which is less than a, a euro, I think it's it's fine. And uh, you can use the internet once per day. Uh, I think it's not a 24-hour thing. I think it's once per day for an hour. So you have to register with your email. It doesn't have to be a real one. 
uh, for McDonald's. And um, there you go, free internet, there are even electric plugs, and uh, basically you can, uh, you usually have to fight for a place to sit down, because there are so many people doing this, like they order a burger or, or just something, and they spend hours there. Um, one thing that you can do and tweak this is basically, uh, you can, well, if you're a techie guy like myself, you can change your MAC address. Uh, there are uh, quite easy guides on how to change your MAC address. There are MAC addresses that, but you have to pay attention because there are certain uh, Wi-Fi, ad uh, yeah, th there are certain Wi-Fi adapters that uh, you won't be able to do, to, to do without breaking uh, your uh, your Wi-Fi adapter for I, I, you can probably restore that as well, but it takes time and it and and effort. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't mess with your your MAC address. Otherwise, you can you can fake your MAC address. And thus, I think the method that I found uh, with my original one, uh, I could have six MAC addresses. That means uh, if you mess around with it, you can have six hours per day for basically a hundred yen. Uh, and uh, the chairs are comfy. I said there's an electric plug, so you don't have to worry about charge either. Uh, you can also do one more thing if you have a tablet or a smartphone. You can register on that as well. So and then you can use, or maybe you. Oh no, no, you can't. Yeah, I, I was about to say you could use it as a hotspot, but that's not how it works. No, uh, you might be able to tether it. I'm not uh, an expert on it. I mean, definitely you can also. If you have free devices, you can bring them all down to McDonald's and use them back to back if you don't want to do the MAC address uh, trick. Um, also, another one is Starbucks that I found, or most of these coffee shops that um, the Japanese seem to enjoy a lot, same as McDonald's. Uh, loads of Japanese people go there, eat something, use the internet for free, and then bugger off. Starbucks also gives you like uh, electric plug, uh, I I don't like coffee, so I just walk in a busy Starbucks, take a seat, and <laughs> use the internet for free. Again, it's a it's a one hour long policy. Um, what else? Usually, shopping malls also have a free internet that you can use. Again, you have to register and stuff. Uh, Metro, uh, Tokyo Metro has. Uh, free Wi-Fi, at least uh, most of the stations have it, plus uh, some JR stations, I found that there are Wi-Fi and then on other stations there are not, I'm not sure what uh, the system is behind that. Um, yeah, if you, if you are seeking internet in Tokyo, uh, you will find it, and you will find it for free or for a little fee that you buy food or drink for. Okay, mobile phones. So the second part of this episode is going to be about um, mobile phones. Um, right, and the phone number. You need a phone number for most of the things, a Japanese phone number for most of the things in Japan, like renting an apartment, um, Mm, I think banking wise you don't need a phone number you don't necessarily need one for uh, uh, well at least for 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 my setup you probably need a phone number for a credit card but because you're a foreigner and I heard that because you're a foreigner you can't get a credit card a Japanese credit card here in Japan that's not an issue for <laughs> for us for you and me so uh, what else do you need a phone number for? Uh, well, a bunch of things, apparently. Uh, you can get into a, a, a deal only if you have a certain type of visa, which is well, a long-term visa, for example, mine, a three, year, uh, three years working visa. With that, you can, um, I think, uh, also with the working holiday visa, you might be able to, but I'm not sure. Anyways, so you need uh, 
for that, you need to have your alien registration card. You need to have an address written on the back of it. And uh, you can get that at the government office for, uh, uh, for the ward that you are living in. You have to go there and, uh, well, it's quite straightforward. And usually uh, the assistants speak English there. Like, at least enough English uh, for, for them to make you understand what you need to do in order to register your, that your address to the back of your alien card. So you will need your alien registration card, uh, Zairu Cardo. Uh, then uh, you will need, uh, j well, any 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 credit card, to be honest. Uh, cash card won't do. I have a cash card at the moment with, with SMBC, and the guy said, well, that's not good enough, even though it's basically it's, it's tied to a... Uh, bank account uh, they're not accepting that one which is uh, quite strange for me but sure so you have to have either a japanese credit card or an overseas credit card and basically the amount like uh, the amount that you agree on in the contract is going to be debited uh, from that credit card or 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 yeah the amount will be collected uh with using uh, the credit card's uh, information that you give. Um, and what else do you need? Well, obviously you have to show your passport with your visa, that it's a long-term visa. And uh, typically that's it. Um, the one I went to was Big Sim, because I read that it's uh, really good. And they are cheap. You could get around, like, certain amount of calls, SMS, and data. I think the data was around 2 gigabytes per month for 1,600 yen. That's 1,600 yen per month that they're going to uh, debit your credit card for uh, every month. And it's a one-year contract. Uh, there is a cancellation fee that basically you have to pay the rest of the uh, of the of the of the outstanding amount uh, uh, up until one year or something. I I couldn't really understand. It's it's not a free cancellation fee. You you you, you can't just go. Well, uh, I don't need this anymore. However, you can change the packages if you like. I'm not sure if you can go. Well, definitely you can go up and down when it comes to like you want to have five gigs um, data allowance or or 10 gigs, I'm not sure about the numbers either, but I remember the cheapest one was uh, 2 gigs. Uh, you can also just go for um, for calls, or, or calls plus SMS, or calls, SMS, and data. Um, well, obviously the best option is the third one, and uh, I'd advise everybody to do that. Uh, basically, the way it works is uh, there are these bigger providers, AU, Docomo, uh, uh, SoftBank, uh, Y, I think so, yeah. I think th those are the four bigger ones. And um, you can either go to them and... Uh, the problem with that is you have to have a phone already that is... Uh, locked into their service in a way so if you if you want to have a for example a softbank um, deal uh, you either buy a softbank phone that is locked into their service so you won't be able to to free it up um, you won't be able to use any other uh, sim cards with it uh, it is what it is like uh, that's basically uh uh, your money thrown out in the trash can if you if you ever leave uh, uh, Japan or if you want to change service uh, So we either go to Akihabara or some other mobile store and uh, and buy a service locked or service provider locked phone and then go to them and get a deal which is usually quite um, inefficient and uh, What's the word I'm looking for and <laughs> well, basically uh, unacceptable in a way uh, they charge you a lot of money and uh, it's like maybe double or three four even five times more for the same deal uh, 
that I just told you about at BigSim. Uh, now, the way it works is that BigSim and uh, there are some other uh, um, service providers out there that do the same. They basically buy uh, services from these bigger service providers and then they distribute their own SIM cards. So you basically use uh, the big service provider service, but it's um, it's a different deal. And um, I'm not sure about um, the details, but still there are a lot of people who go for uh, the big service providers regardless. I found big SIM uh, to be really good. Uh, uh, the advantage of it is that as they use uh, different service providers' networks, it means that anywhere you go, basically in Japan, you will have uh, service. Uh, well, if you stay inside Tokyo, you won't have a problem anyways. Uh, and of course, because of the evidence of Wi-Fi as well that you can use, um, it's really good. And uh, I... I'd really advise to for for you to check out Big Sim. That's B I C S I M. And uh, yeah, technically, uh, that's what I'm getting right now. And uh, um, the other part is um, your mobile phone. So Big Big Sim. Uh, uh, and well, the other advantage of Big Sim is that you can you can use your SIM free phone. That's unlocked. Uh, you go to Big Camera, that's B-I-C Camera with a C, and uh, you just have to ask the representatives there, like, hi, um, I'm, I'm from abroad, obviously, if you look at me, I need a, a big SIM card, and uh, they even let you test it out, so they give you, like, a, a testing card, and, and, and they set uh, uh, your phone up uh, so they can see that, yeah, it works and everything is fine. Um, once that's done, uh, yeah, what, uh, once that is done, uh, you're basically good to go, you pay, and then that's it, sign the contract, you're done. Now, what happened to me was, uh, I tripped on the wire of my, my phone while it was charging, and the USB... Uh, the well, the micro USB socket, uh, like the power plug, uh, got ripped out and uh, it basically destroyed the the USB charging plug. Now, <laughs> uh, it's a really tough situation because um, you wanna either, well, because I have a very special Chinese phone, even though China is like not too far away it's hard to get the parts for it some uh, some uh, some repair shops said well they don't even deal with phones from abroad some other repair f uh, shops only deal with iPhones and uh, there were others that said well you basically have to buy a new phone because it's either like they 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 cannot just um replace that USB charging unit uh, which is a problem, and uh, they offered me like around seven thousand yen for uh, for a fix. And I'm like, well, I, I could just buy a new phone with that, right? I could just go to Akihabara and buy a used phone. It's it doesn't really matter at all. Now, uh, the the resolution that I got, and uh, I've, I've 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 tried contacting multiple repair shops, and all of them came back with either a very expensive answer or with an answer that, well, they they won't do it because they don't know how to do it. Um, you can, if, if this happens to you, you can uh, basically uh, use a knife and uh, uh, there, well, there is a guide how to do this. You can hook up uh, your USB charging cable straight to your battery uh, however this is only a temporary solution i know but it really helps in uh, times of emergency i'm gonna link that one in the description as well um it basically takes 10 minutes and a little bit of uh, well you don't even need any technical knowledge it's it's a really good guidance really easy to do um it works 
and it keeps your phone alive. Um, I'm still testing it right now. It's uh, right next to me, and uh, I'm monitoring if it gets uh, overheated and stuff. It's fine. It's fine for now. Uh, also, because I couldn't enter into a contract right away because uh, I didn't have my overseas credit card on me uh, when I went to BigSim. I got a, a temporary data only card so it's a it's a one time uh, well you, you can charge it up but uh, you basically you buy the same there are uh, data plans uh, for 2 gig 3 gig 5 gig 10 gig as much as you want and also uh, you have a limited time to use this amount so the the card actually will expire in 30 days 3 months etc um it cost me around 4000 yen for a free gig plan that i can use for 30 days uh it's really helpful uh you just basically pop the card into your phone you do get a phone number but it's uh, it cannot be used for calls or sms it's only for data and um i think line facebook whatsapp and some other applications have free uh, transfer rates, that, which means that that doesn't count towards your maximum uh, uh, data allowance, which is pretty good. Mm. And basically, that's all I wanted to talk about at the moment. Um, yeah, I know this is very specific, but uh, I'm trying to give you guys some some ideas of. Uh, how it is to live in Tokyo and what to do if something happens to you. Uh, usually you can find uh, quite a lot of English speakers in Akihabara, which is good. Uh, most repair shops, yeah, uh, well, the repair shop I went to for uh, to ask for, uh, for assistance, uh, there was an Indian guy and uh, he was very helpful. Uh, also, it doesn't uh, really, well, it, also, it's 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 uh, really good if you speak some Japanese, at least the basics, so you can explain what what's happening uh, to your phone, why it can't, uh, yeah, why you, you you cannot use it, etc. So yeah, that's all about uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, oh yeah, one more thing: you can rent a pocket Wi-Fi, but I think it's uh, it's quite expensive. Uh, just Google Pocket Wi-Fi Tokyo. You can have it delivered to your home, to the airport. It's basically just a portable device, which uh, it's it's yeah, it's a it's a portable hotspot uh, that um, that you can use. It's it has quite good coverage, uh, but I think it's quite expensive. It's only a temporary solution as well. What you want to do if you live in Tokyo is um, find an apartment where there is internet. Uh, to get an internet in a flat where um, where you don't have any uh, is uh, is quite complicated. There are other podcasts that uh, um, that you need to listen to if you're into that. Like you have to uh, call the call, call two different agencies to get your internet roaring. So it's it's better to look for apartments where it's already fitted with internet, and you just have to basically. Uh, start uh, the deal. Uh, I think it's just a phone call. Uh, uh, yeah, I think you're just a phone call away from from uh, from starting your contract again in that certain apartment. Um, and yeah, internet wise, that's it. Wi-Fi wise, that's it. And phone wise, there's a lot to talk about phones. But um, to be fair, most Japanese people use iPhones. And it boggles me because I'm I'm an Android guy, and I know that iPhone is uh, it's good quality. Uh, it's easy to use. You can't really break it. However, I don't like the whole concept of it being so pricey and that you have to pay for most of your applications. Whereas in Android, you, there is a free free option for everything. Uh, yeah. That's it. That was episode three, talking about Wi-Fi, phones, internet.